everyone. Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. I was sitting and I realized that it has been so long since I filmed a discussion video on this channel. I used to do them all the time and a topic came up in I think it was two videos back about this idea of male authors sort of in a way and I'll get into it pretending to be women to better sell their thriller novels. And, and I want to be clear up front this is not a call out video by any stretch of the imagination because one this video is based on articles that came out back in 2017 was actually when people were really talking about this but I mentioned it in a couple of videos back and a lot of you guys were saying you wanted to see a video on it so we could discuss so let's go ahead and get into it so as I said this video is kind of based off of three articles I read and so I'll put the titles of them in the magazines down below in case you want to go read them yourself but they were all published in 2017 and they were discussing this idea that a lot of the thrillers you're picking up at Barnes & Noble or online that you might think are written by women are actually written by men and that's for a very intentional reason. A lot of this occurred with the popularity of say Gone Girl with our lord and savior Gillian Flynn, the, the girl on the train, Karen Slaughter, just all of these powerhouse women who have pretty much just taken over the crime fiction slash thriller genre. Publishing companies started to see this, I don't know if trend would be the right word, but how women were writing these thrillers and crime fiction novels that were selling incredibly well, getting turned into blockbuster movies. And so we've slowly started to see men taking on unisex names. And I'll get into the fact a little bit about them being unisex, but just as some examples that the articles brought up, Todd Ritter and now writes under the name Riley Sager. He wrote books like Final Girls and Lock Every Door, which I just reviewed. You have AJ Finn, um, whose real name is Daniel Mallory. This is one that I was surprised by that I didn't realize until I was reading these articles. And S.J. Watson, Before I Go to Sleep, is one of my favorite thrillers or mystery novels. That's actually written by Steve Watson. Then you have Tony Strong, who writes under the name J.P. Delaney now. And then you have Sean Thomas, who writes under the name S.K. Tremont. Maine. And that was one of the other ones I also thought was a woman. And I do want to be clear up front, I'm assuming that it's their publishing companies. I mean, I should also be clear, I know absolutely zero about the publishing industry or how selling books works. I'm mainly just talking about this because this channel, I'm primarily reviewing thrillers and horror novels. And so since this is such a big thing happening in the thriller book community, I thought it was worthwhile to talk about. But to be clear, very out of my depth, I don't know how selling books works. But all that being said, I would assume that none of this is the author's ideas. I would assume that it's probably their marketing teams, the publishing houses who are seeing this trend happening and seeing how well women are doing in terms of selling thrillers and crime novels and then they're probably you know pushing them to do this I would assume. Now I think it was in either my last or second to last video I mentioned in passing when I was reviewing Lock Every Door which side note I thought was super fun if you want a fast-paced thriller I do really recommend it and I mentioned in passing Riley Sager who a lot of people think is a woman is actually Todd Ritter. And there are quite a few comments where people were saying, well, Riley could be a man's name. And that is the point. <laughs> the point is, from what I've read, is that they're not taking on overtly female names. Because if they did that, then there would be more of an outright lie that they're pretending to be women. But by taking this kind of combination of a gender neutral name, having a female protagonist, having this be a thriller that's pretty much by the cover and everything else marketed to women. The person, you and me, who's walking around Bards Noble and happens to see this book by an author that we're not familiar with, because of the combination of all those different factors, in general, obviously there'll be some outliers, but in general, the average person will walk by and assume that the author is female. Whether or not a few of you happen to think from the beginning that a lot of these authors were men is a little bit, I don't want to say irrelevant, but it is kind of irrelevant because the goal is that the average person walking by will assume that they're female. And it was interesting reading some interviews with some of these authors because one said we didn't overtly lie it's a cutthroat industry which I can understand and, and these publishing houses are just flat out saying that if people assume th these authors are female it's very good for business because last year and I thought this was really interesting and I didn't realize this last year women bought 60% of all fiction and between 60 to 80% of thrillers so male authors and I'll get into why in a little bit but male authors are really kind of considering themselves, and I do see the irony here, they're considering themselves at almost a disadvantage if the average person walking through the store 
Hepworth recognizes immediately, oh, this is a thriller with a female protagonist written by a male. They're considering that to kind of put them at a disadvantage compared to female authors. And again, I do see the irony when you think of like J.K. Rowling and the Bronte sisters having to pretend that they're men, you know, I recognize the irony here. And Riley Sager in an interview said, I didn't want there to be people thinking I was trying to deceive them in any way. But at the same time, I think it's cool to have a little mystery. And if you do Google, for example, I'm just picking Riley Sager, Todd Ritter to talk about. If you do Google him, you know, it's very obvious with his Twitter picture. He is, you know, he has his face. It's not like he's walking around online and interviews trying to pretend that Riley Sager is a woman. In general, what it seems like they're trying to do is not necessarily in interviews and on their online presences pretend that they're women, but more so, again, if you're that person just walking through a bookstore and seeing these books, that in those scenarios you'll be more likely to assume they're female and then buy the book. And getting into some reasoning behind why women are possibly less likely to pick up thrillers if they're written by a male author and they have a female protagonist is because, and this is what some of the articles have said, and I'm curious if you guys agree with this or not, is that some fans doubt the authenticity of a female narrator's voice when it's delivered by a male author. There was, I'm forgetting which author it was, but one of them in these articles mentions that they wore a bra for a week into the office because they wanted to practice taking it on and off because bras were mentioned in the book and they didn't want to mess up how that process worked in terms of the feeling of wearing it and taking it on or off. So it is interesting because that's not something I've really thought about before. And Tony Strong, again, who writes under J.P. Delaney, said at almost every event someone will say, oh, I didn't realize you weren't a woman. And he said that he's always pleased because it means that he wrote very convincingly as a woman narrator. So that's all my background and kind of summary on this. And I'm really curious again, this isn't meant to be a call out video. I am just want to express a little bit of my opinions and I'm really curious to hear from you guys as well. So I have two questions for you guys. And the first one is, do you agree? Are you less likely to pick up a thriller if it's a female protagonist written by a male author? <clears throat> excuse me. Does that cause you to then have trouble picturing yourself in the narrator's shoes? Does it make you doubt the authenticity of the author's voice? And for the second question, I'm curious, do you care? Do you think this is deceitful? Or do you think, hey, this happens in every single industry with every different type of group and combination under the, under the sun? So just do you care? And again, I'm not very familiar with this industry. So I'd be really curious if anybody watching is, do you see this happening with different groups? Obviously, back in time and unfortunately not very long ago like I said with people like JK Rowling women have felt the need to pretend to be men so that they could sell books and I will admit part of me doesn't care at all of this and I understand business is business selling books is a business and I get it there is just I think that small percent of me that has trouble getting over the irony when you when you think of what women have struggled through to get to this point where we're selling a genre at a higher rate than men and then you have men pretending although pretending in loose quotes since I get it they're using gender neutral names but you have men pretending to be women it does sit very slightly not well with me I'll be honest but at the same time I do get that business is business I will admit that I do find myself picking up books that are written by women much more often than I do men so I guess I do fall into that category of women who are more likely to pick up books by other women so I do see where they're coming from in that respect but again I'm very curious do you find yourself thinking and looking at the author before you pick up a book? But and overall, do you think this is an issue and do you care or not? Um, so I hope you all enjoyed this video and thought it was interesting. As always, I'll have my Instagram and Twitter down below if you want to follow me there and I'll see you all next time. Bye.